November 6th. I will call our meeting to order. Roll call. Joel? Here. Rod? Here. Leah? Here. Jim? Here. Charlie? Here. Adam? Here. And here. I just learned. Oh. And our meeting been really noticed. Yes.
Yeah. Right. You'll be trending in no time. Now. On behalf of our board and uh, our team, we have a small certificate just to extend our appreciation to you and congratulate you. And then we hope that you'll wear this pin proudly. Uh, I have one for your sister. Give me 30 seconds because I don't want you to go without getting one either because you've got such a great smile too, you know. invite our families uh, to uh, November 29th. We'll be hosting a seminar, a, a, a nice evening, I think, for parents who might like to learn more about our digital citizenship efforts, our efforts to prevent bullying, harassment, and intimidation in our schools, and then also talk about how they can be um, helpful in that process for us so that we can address any kinds of concerns. That's uh, as a result of some good work being done by our library media specialists and officer Steve Rosemeyer. More information about that is forthcoming, but we look forward to, to sharing more about that. Any more members? Any other
current. Motion to approve. I'll second that. Motion by Leah, seconded by Adam to approve our personnel transactions. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Number five, the consent agenda. Is there anything that anyone would like to pull out to discuss? Thank you, President. If I might just interrupt, uh, please take note of board members of letter D. Uh, you may remember uh, this was uh, a contract that we engaged in in order to continue our uh, physics course. It's over $25,000 by about I think $500, and so just honoring our board's process, we placed it under consent agenda. Thank you. Is that payment in full? Yes, uh, for the semester. Mm -hmm. For the semester.
like you to, if you could please, just look at your calendars over the course of next week or two um, to determine whether or not your availability allows you to attend um, all or some of the convention. We would love to um, have you join us. Uh, it's a great opportunity to learn together as a professional learning community, but then also um, we recognize that many of you obviously work, uh, and so to the extent to which you need to um, be available for just one or even none for that matter, and we, we certainly respect that too. We've booked hotel rooms already so as not to lose um, uh, hotel space at the <coughs> where the event is held. Um, actually, I think it's now called the Baird Center. Um, I was just going to Google and be like, did yeah. they move it? Yeah, I mean, nobody's going to I guess. We, we don't know. Sarah Stracker caught that for us. But yeah. Um, and it, what would be nice is if you cannot attend, then we can release those hotel rooms uh, so that another school district could take advantage of those. But I'd uh, love to answer any questions you might have, but maybe even hear from other board members who've been to that in the past. I'm going. All right. Tell my boss. Thank you. I'm going to go So, tell my boss. <laughs> you know that guy? Yeah, I do. I, 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 so your wife said it was okay. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, also. Awesome. Boy, that was easy. And no pressure on others right now. Happy to, to take your thoughts. Maybe if I could know by the end of, of November, uh, that way I could be sure to get uh, you registered. Thank you. 6C. This is uh, an event that's been in my mind now um, since coming to Mount Cora. Uh, and I'm so grateful that the board would take time to consider this effort. It's part of what we're calling our International Baccalaureate Program. And uh, long before we got the community feedback with regard to rigor, as well as preparation um, for our students in post-secondary studies, a team of us have been studying the possibility <coughs> of offering a career-related diploma-based program offered through the International Baccalaureate Program. Uh, as a former high school principal, I was um, excited to be a part of a school that built an International Baccalaureate Program, which, by the way, continues to this day, uh, 25 plus years ago. Uh, and I know of its impact on not only our young people, and their opportunities post high school, but I also know of um, the opportunities it has for community. And so um, with the board's preliminary um, kind of thumbs up, uh, I began to uh, connect with a couple of colleagues and ask them to join me on this journey. And I'm so pleased to introduce them to you tonight. I'm referring to our director of instruction, Sarah Straka, our principal of the high school, Mr. Cody Lundquist, and our associate principal of the high school, Mrs. Talisa Corcoran. And what we'd like to do tonight is uh, set the table for you about the work that has been done uh, with our staff and the work to be done with our community over the course of the next couple of months, and then avail ourselves to any questions that you may have. So with that being said, I'm gonna turn it over to my friend and colleague, Mr. Cody Lundquist. Yeah, thank, thank you. You. Uh, you may have seen this before, This image. Um, we try to have it on our website. We've had our newsletter. Um, over the last year of building our staff actually wanted to develop mission and vision. Our building, you know, kind of where we were going, who we were, um, who we defined, what defined us. Um, we spent all last year, and this, this was kind of our, our our final product, our mission of being, we exist to prepare all students to be contributing members of society and lead fulfilling lives. Um, and then we decided, okay, well, you know, we, we, needed, we needed a vision, right? And so we kind of came up with three things, a lot of different, a lot of conversations. Um, SEL is kind of the first one, social emotional learning. High academic expectations, the second one, and then that post-secondary readiness. And I think what we've realized in this journey with um, IB is, a, especially those last two, really blends very well with it, right? High academic um, expectations and global expectation, along with that post-secondary readiness. And I really think of that um, career program is really kind of what makes this piece unique. And I know Lisa will talk a little bit about why that program may kind of became unique for us. But really as we start looking at as a staff, as a building, what defines us, who we are, what makes us strong. Um, and that's what these are based on, right? These weren't about what we need to get better at. This is what we are, these are our strengths. Um, we realize, and as I looked at this, it's like what an opportunity to bring a program in and bring another opportunity for students to learn. 
that also continues to build and continues to really emphasize the, these critical components. And so um, this was all separate, right? This was staff, this was staff meetings and activities and all kinds of stuff. And so really to have this blend really well with what I feel the mission and vision of um, IB and especially the career program, it just, they felt like it feels like a good marriage. It feels like a good connection, kind of that next step um, in our building. So, and this was um, mission and vision feedback from our staff. This was actually even, this was kind of when we, we started asking questions, like what, what do we need to do? What can we become? And these are post-its from what, a year ago? I mean, if not more, um, right? AP classes, students taking rigorous courses, pathways for lots of students, programming scene, um, to you know, model Wisconsin, provide challenging coursework, um, high standards for students, having high standards. Um, and really this is coming from our staff. What we know about the International Baccalaureate Program is it, it does set a high bar, but it sets a, a, a kind of a different high bar for us compared to AP. Um, and it provides students a different opportunity to try things at a really high level differently. And I think that's what's really exciting. Um, and this came from our staff, this came from us and kind of in our brainstorming. And so you say have a rigorous curriculum as you turn the people in there. So this is kind of what came out of the building and I just think what a good connection it is to this program um, as we start to develop it as I've, as I've learned more um, moving forward. You can leave it. So uh, just some, some numbers to consider and think about when we talk about international faculty. This is an international program and we can see the number of schools worldwide, the number of schools in the U.S. and Wisconsin and then the number of CP programs. Uh, the CP program is actually one of four programs you can see on the lower right. Uh, they actually have a middle years, or sorry, a primary years program, so elementary program. And they have a middle years, a middle school program. Um, and then they have two high school programs. One is called the diploma program, we call it DP for short, and the career related, which is CP for short. Um, many school districts, <coughs> almost all school districts actually start with a DP program because that's the program that's been around the longest. 55 years. Um, the, CP pro the CP program is the newer program that, that's out there. We've been talking about team education, uh, career pathways, career related programming. IB is catching up with that now. Um, and within Mount Hora, we saw the CP program is actually what we want to be. Because we've been talking about community coalition, continuing ed, dual credit, career pathways. And it made sense for us to really combine our current work and our current priorities with the International Black Warrior CP program. So the IB mission statement, again, just looking to develop the inquiry, the knowledge, the care, the kindness of our young people to really work um, interglobally with others, um, understand other cultures, have a broader perspective outside of our, outside of Wisconsin, outside of the United States. And again, just as, as, a, as a board, you've been working on um, a graduate readiness profile. We, we looked at that um, at the building workshop. IB has a learner profile as well. You see many of the same qualities, characteristics, dispositions um, within the IB program that you were witness to last week when we looked at our draft version from for Mount Coral. Um, I don't think you can probably say any of these things don't matter. When, when, when we think about where we want our students to go. Um, and the I really liked that global piece of uh, overnight, open mindedness, communicating at the principal, um, and, and just really looking for inquiry at the most pieces as well. All right, so over the summer, um, our group of four here were able to um, go to an IB International Conference. So thank you for approving that. There was a lot of learning that occurred. And after we were there, um, I started to go through the process of feasibility study. So looking into, again, what was already stated, and what are some current strengths that we have at Mount Horeb, um, within current programming that we have within our CT department. And um, the career-related program seemed to, again, be a really great fit because it'll further um, give students options, um, flexibility within their schedules. And similarly to what Sarah said, a lot of those districts that we were collaborating with and connecting with at this conference were saying that they're noticing even more students switching from their CP, from their DP program into the CP program because students want to be able to have flexibility and different opportunities within their high school career. 
Um, so again, it blends with our current course offerings um, and can be successfully implemented within our current system, which is definitely a strength as well. So the CP program, this will get a little bit more into specifics. Students that are enrolled in this program will be in it within their 11th and 12th grade year. They would be able to choose from different pathway options, and those are all to be determined. But some of the different pathways that other schools are running um, or the, the IB program recommends would be like a business, pro or a business pathway, agriculture, computer science. Um, students would have to have four course-related um, classes that they're taking that are aligned to their pathway. So for example, if a student was in the business pathway, they might be taking um, accounting and, uh, not enjoy the business, accounting and, <laughs> I'm getting nervous, um, some, different, some different business courses that we would already naturally have at the high school. We wouldn't have to change those at all. That's just part of the natural programming with the CP program. Um, so again, we don't need to revise these courses. So within the program, students do have to pass two IB courses. So those, again, would be determined. It makes the most sense to have them aligned with courses um, required credits for graduation. So really looking at get English or math because students already have that credit requirement. Um, one course does have to run over a two-year period. And with um, some of the IB courses, you do have to look at the amount of hours, but fortunately, we do have a lot of flexibility within our staff period where we can integrate that extra time as well. Um, also, the core has um, four different components, which is a professional, um, personal and professional skills class, a reflective project that would be over the two years that a student is in the IB program. There is a service learning component, um, and that's outside of the classroom, and it would be around 50 hours. And what they recommend is to have this directly aligned to the career pathway that a student is interested in to just make sure it's really meaningful work. And there is a language development portfolio that is embedded within the core as well, where um, students would figure out, it's, it's moving forward in language. There's a variety of ways that you can meet um, that component. You could be enrolled in a language course, you could take, um, you could show additional growth and advancement in a online language course like Duolingo, or is what some other schools are doing. Um, a lot of schools recommend aligning it even with the career pathway that a student is in. So if there's like a healthcare pathway, finding out language that's within that field. So, so if someone's going to be a nurse or a doctor one day, they're going to know the, the language that you might hear on the job site. So. There's a lot of flexibility and really unique ways to meet that component as well. So the overall framework of the CP program, again, it advances that linguistic proficiency, um, whether it is um, within the career piece or even thinking social language. Um, it advances critical thinking skills within their framework for the courses within the IB framework. Um, develops students to be mature and responsible learners, that's um, time management piece as well as that strong work ethic. And again, we're advancing students to be prepared for the career, either any career that they're choosing to go into or post-secondary education. So after a student completes their two-year program within the CP, they would earn a certificate through the IB program and that would really make them stand out within a college application process. Within the two IB courses that they take, there are external exams very similar to AP that a student would have as well, and that could also transfer to post-secondary credit too. Um, again, manage time and stress, get really prepared for the workforce, which is directly aligned to what our staff said that they wanted for our mission and vision as well. So, next steps. We are currently in our application for candidacy. Um, and as soon as we receive a green light um, from your group, we would hope to submit that. Um, and then it move forward to hire a CP coordinator. After our um, application is reviewed and approved, we would then begin our candidacy process, which means we would be working directly with a member of a manager within the IB program to look at what course offerings, um, making sure that the courses that we have selected as our DP 
teaching courses within the RD framework um, directly aligned with what they're wanting. Um, we would also make sure that we were starting to begin um, to train additional staff members. And then we would have our application open for authorization. Um, once they we re review and submit a lot of evidence, they would go through it, uh, hopefully approve um, us for the authorization. They're really good on giving feedback and working through you um, within this process. So I know that we can do it. <laughs> and the um, goal is to have our first class in the 2025 school year, which would be our freshman, the class of 2027, and our second cohort, um, so we'd have two grade levels running by the 2026 school year. And there are additional resources. The website is extensive if you've had the opportunity to look at it. <laughs> also impressive has been your leadership. Lisa has served as our quasi head of schools uh, for this program, helping to lead our cadre of, of uh, learners and uh, have done really a very nice job of engaging our colleagues too at the high school. I'm wondering if maybe just to start the question and answer part of this, can you talk a little bit about the articulation that happens between um, our universities and colleges and the CP program? Yeah, so um, very similar to what I was noting with the external assessment, students are graded on a one through seven scale with the IV um, assessments that they take in the spring, very similar to AP. A student normally needs to score a four or above to receive post-secondary credit. Um, from what we've been looking at with different credit tables within the University of Wisconsin system or various Midwest universities, um, it really depends on what you're wanting it to align with, um, very similar to AP. So it's up to the university, but there are a lot of um, options that are available and out there, especially within our more local ones, like UW-Madison, Milwaukee, um, Oshkosh, Eau Claire, where a lot of students are going. By offering the IB program, we believe that we're providing more opportunities for our young people to explore options. Um, this is not about elitism. Um, this is not about trying to capture um, the highest performing students. It's about capturing all students, meeting them at their readiness level. So it might be a student who's pursuing a four-year uh, four college program, or it might be a student who is just wanting to go straight into the workforce. How can we lift them and help build capacity in them even further so they can be successful regardless of the choices that they make? It will run concurrent with the advanced placement program, it supplements, it doesn't supplant. And that's what excites me about this. You're probably wondering, gee, how many kids do we think we might reach in uh, the 11th grade or the 12th grade? I think we'd see it as a success, push back on me, I think we'd see it as a success as if during the first year we saw 20 students participating, um, and maybe get to about 25. We know that our students have an appetite for this. Uh, we know that our parents have an appetite for this definitely know our business community would have an appetite for this. So we're very excited about, about this uh, possibility. We would ask uh, and entertain any questions that the board may have. So what's to say we, I mean these are admirable goals, but what, what's to say that we, we, we couldn't figure out a way on, uh, on our own to, to implement those uh, same goals without an expense that I'll Ask about in just a minute, but why? Why, why are why are we? I mean, particularly for this number of kids, why why aren't we just sort of rejiggering what we've what we've got and saving ourselves some bucks? Not shorting the kids, of course, but doing a great job to prepare them for the kind of the, the goals of a program like this. We see it as two primary reasons amongst many. The first of which is we know that the doors that get opened up by a student who has that IB certificate at the end of their work, it creates many, many more opportunities for kids that they wouldn't have otherwise. But quite frankly, as we also look to the numbers of students who are participating in our school district, like all school districts around the state right now, enrollment is dropping. And how do we differentiate ourselves uh, from other school communities that offer something special? 
I see this as being a magnet of some sort uh, through open enrollment for our young people. The closest CP program that I'm aware of, tell me if I'm wrong, is the Oconomowoc School District. Um, so we have an opportunity, I think, to differentiate ourselves and maybe bring in another revenue stream into our district that could hopefully um, supersede the expense that we see uh, coming through. And what is that expense? Uh, the expense is through the report that we have. Um, that's not so sure put that in the district's um, admin. Thirty seconds. I put that in there for us. We know an expense um, that's coming through uh, already, which the board approved, is also around. Um, the hiring of a CP and a career related coordinator position. We knew that that's something we needed to do all along, but you might have seen in our feasibility study, again, a tip of the hat to our dear Talisa for putting this together. We put together a, a tentative budget. All of this is budgeted for, and you can see year by year uh, what the expense would be. There are some hard uh, costs in, in uh, the first couple of years to get us off the ground, particularly around training. Um, because we want to make certain that if we're going to do this, we do it right and get our staff to um, these events, um, either through online or through in-person training. Um, and then you can see um, that those costs are carrying costs thereafter. Um, so the biggest cost would be the cost for us to have a, a IB career-related and uh, a community coalition partner. Uh, who could help us uh, run the day-to-day -day operations of the program. So that's all part of our anticipated budget here. Ongoing expenses though, um, not anything more, probably about $5,000 annually in terms of uh, what it takes to get the certification and maintain certification uh, and the like. Well, the, those are the resources of publications. Thank you. The, the annual fee after we receive authorization would be the $8,925. It's it's two pages, so it's a little messy if oh. you scroll up. So thank you. So give or take about 15000 for the program. For the program, yeah. So the, it's the rest of it is a staff position. Personnel, yeah, exactly. And I think something that we also were considering within all of this is we do have to think about having to possibly train some new staff depending on someone leaving like those are variables that are outside of our control um so maybe looking at um putting some just a little bit of extra fluff in there for that need will there be any cost there will be a um, cost for the exam yes that's it please and i think we would have to um once we're faced with that question, we have to think about maybe the same process that we go through within our AP um, testing to make sure that it's very equitable and similar practices. The training, is it specific to a lot of the content courses would just be the same. So would those teachers need training or no, it's no. the training would be limited to the teachers who are teaching the IP specific. Mm -hmm. So you would have to have training for your um, coordinator. You'd have to have training for the individual that is teaching your PPS course. A lot of schools recommend to also um, have your library media specialist trained um, because that individual can be very helpful within that reflective project, that intensive research that's occurring over the two years. And the three courses that we would choose to be the IV courses, those individuals would have to be trained as well. <coughs> Would we cap, would we have to put a cap on it at all? So say, you know, year after year it grows, ultimately the goal right, and we have 100 kids that want to do it, is that going to put, is that a problem? Yeah. Thanks for asking. I don't foresee us at this point because, God bless you, we have multiple avenues for kids to explore what's right for them. And this isn't going to be a program that's right for everybody, but we do think it's going to meet the needs of a large swath of our students. And another thing, sorry, Please another thing to note too is within the courses that are listed as IB courses, students that are outside of the CP program would also have accessibility to that content too. So even if they're choosing to not be in that CP program, they would still be able to take the course and the exam. So a lot of different options. I thought we mentioned the doors that were opened. Mm -hmm. I went onto the website, looked at it, and 
been doing some independent research, uh, mostly on the diploma side, because I'm trying to figure out what sure. I'm doing. Uh, and deal with numbers stuff and stuff. So, yeah. um, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I'll give you an example. Um, many universities and colleges really find high value for students who completed this kind of rigorous coursework. And it's almost a gateway, a ticket, if you will, into some of the more prestigious universities and colleges around the country. I've seen that personally. I've witnessed that for even on the CP even side. Even on the CP okay. side. Um, particularly even with uh, young people who want to go into the trades and some of the more um, recognized um, trades programs, students have pathways into those that maybe others wouldn't have had that opportunity. Um, and people are aware of the rigor um, and the work ethic that's required of students who actually get that certificate. Um, that they know that what they know what they're getting when they bring someone on board like that, whether that be in the workplace or that be in, in the uh, university or course studies. So the pathways seem fairly broad, you know, computer science, agriculture. So then if when they're picking their four classes, those four classes could be AP biology or it could be regular biology. Like they could tailor it not only to the subject area, but also like sort of the, whether it's a class or not, class in terms of intensity. Yes, so students would still always have accessibility to AP courses. They would just need to make sure that their schedule is aligned with the requirements of the IBCP program, meaning that they would have to pass two IB courses, and one of their IB courses has to be over the two years. I think you see the broad range of like the pathways, because we're going to be looking at the DPI Right, DPI is approved in six pathways in the regional Nevada area, right? And that's agriculture, there's a variety of them, right? And this is all kind of going for a big push for DPI, rightfully so, thankfully, finally, to really have a concentration on the pathways and really giving students good guidance, right? And really looking at those pathways. And for students to take, let's say they're in the business pathway for CP, take accounting, they'll take personal finance, because that's a graduation requirement, right? Um, they could be taking accounting one, accounting two, They've got um, marketing, we've got um, general business, Microsoft Essentials, Microsoft Essentials account, um, whether it's Word or PowerPoint or it's Excel, right? We have a lot of courses, whether it's agriculture, I mean, but don't any courses we have in ag, whether it's welding or horticulture. We do have a lot of courses embedded. They said they take, take four of those, right? And so, um, having, I think we'll look at what our strengths are, where we have it, and where our students being able to have conversations with students as well to see where their interests are. You're gonna let that also help guide really what we're looking for, what type of pathways. Like we haven't decided <laughs> because we still need that student voice and to help us give us that direction because it should be about our students here and their focus, right? Um, and where their general areas are. Would you mind talking about the surveying that we want to do with our students? Yeah, I have one oh, thing so excuse so me. back on that and I'll get there. Um, another thing too is students for the career related um, courses, they can also do a group friendship. Um, uh, shadowing or what am I trying to say? I'm looking for right now. Um, Pardon? Work based learning? Thank you. Work based learning. Beautiful. Thanks, Sarah Shaka. Um, for some of the career related courses as well. So, if, you know, I think when you're reflecting back on what we currently offer, it's again another, another way for our programming to mesh really well. Um, your question was. I was just thinking about student voice and yes. how we're going to help determine pathways. You know, Cody loves being on camera and is creating. My face is not going to be on the camera. Oh, darn it. Just my so, voice. So, um, similar to what he mentioned about the uh, pathways that are coming out from DPRI, he's going through um, and organizing a video that's going to be going out to families explaining all of the different pathways and getting some feedback from our students as far as which ones would have the highest interest. And we would then be exploring. Um, what we currently have for courses to see if that would be the best area to be able to, to begin this work. IB recommends looking at two pathways initially, and then you can eventually expand out once you're doing something pretty well and seeing the additional offerings that you can provide for students. And marrying those student interests with that of our Chamber of Commerce and what they need, I think will help us produce what they're looking for and give the students what they want. So, Cody, can you help us better understand, you know, at the end of the day, we're still working with 16, 17, 18-year-old kids. Yep. 
we're narrowing down a career path if, if we go down this I be one of the six pathways and I realized this isn't for me what happens and Lisa you kind of you kind of mentioned it earlier where you're still taking the same AP courses you're still mm -hmm. but can you just talk a little bit about that yeah I mean I think like any student right we have students now who thankfully you do the friendship where they get a job and they go well, okay maybe I'm not very good with my hands maybe I should be a welder or I can't really do blood, so maybe being a vet tech isn't really my jam, right? And I think it's about exposing students, but exposing students at a high level, exposing students at a, at a different way. Um, look at me, right? I was a poli sci major in college. I guess maybe I theoretically do it in half, but I'm not doing what I went to college for originally because I think our students will have op multiple opportunities, multiple things. And I think what here is we, we're not locking students in. We're not saying to kids, okay, well, you, you chose the, the business pathway, you were, you know, you thought you for sure I'll ever be a, a business person. I think what we're doing is we're giving them, we're kind of giving them insight, we're giving, giving, exploring, whether it's through the project or the service learning, better understanding of what that looks like, just like we do with youth apprenticeship, just like we do with um, any type of career day, but this just is a bigger, kind of more robust way to do that. Um, and yeah, students get into it, and they're like, okay, this is my thing. They're still taking these courses, they can still get the college credit for the course they passes. I mean, say go to a university site in Wisconsin to see the benefits they're going to get for the general chemistry, some of those courses. It's going to save students tens, you talk about saving money, so our students are going to save tens of thousands of dollars, right? And if, if there's anything that speaks to the parent of maybe only eight year old, why that things are true in my ear, right? Of how can we save money? But I think it's not about locking kids in, but it's about just exposing giving students a lot of opportunities. And I think no matter what, they're still going to walk out of the program with a lot of benefits, so they're going to receive extensive research and coaching along that process which is that's going to transfer to post-secondary they're going to be um challenged with critical thinking and like having a bigger perspective of some of the problems that we're facing in our world that we read about on the news every day and i actually just asked that exact same question to the coordinator over in kind of walk i had a video meeting with her the other day and she said i actually had a senior that was in an accounting she was in the business and was really focused on accounting and that's what her youth apprenticeship was as well and decided at the end of her senior year she's like oh I, I know I don't want to do this she's like okay well what are you thinking that you want to do now and she said well I think I want to do something more like political science you know working with people uh, and they actually changed her reflective project to kind of mirror what her her change of thought was but also have that accounting piece in there too um, so I think there's always unique ways that we can adjust programs for student needs like within the components of the cp to still make sure they come out with a certain so that that's kind of my question you know when you need to have x many classes related in that pathway in your example right there where that student just changed three semesters in out of her four total that's feasible you know, yeah. Still. yeah your career related courses can't change but maybe there's a different course that might align more um, but I think the, uh, the components of the IEP piece, the reflective project, the language component, um, the personal and professional skills, that would be a course that would be helpful for any of our juniors and seniors because that's going to be the transferable work skills, interview prep, um, interpersonal skills, ethics. So those are all things that you're going to be ahead of the game in any, any job or even in <coughs> your post-secondary studies. So another question, obviously the, the person that leads out this program, but what other resources do you foresee that we can help you with that, that you see down the road? Um, I would say with this program as well, it'd be really beneficial um, to be part of the Wisconsin Association of IP Schools. They meet about once a month and it's all IP coordinators um, or head of schools that are having that collaborative and professional network. Um, I think it's continuing to make sure that we are adapting and changing for the job market. So something that's working right now might not be what we need to be doing in eight years. And having the, the flexibility and the comfortability to have challenging conversations and be able to change with what we need to do. So we continue to make sure that we're meeting the needs of our learners. I have one more to add to that, and that goes to the piece that I spoke of earlier advertising budget uh, to begin to market this around the region uh, to start bringing in families um, from other districts that don't have this opportunity uh, and really see this as uh, one of the gems in our crown 
we would be the only school in Dane County that would be offering this, um, the ACP program. Um, the only school that offers anything IB is Madison Country Day, and I believe that's the elementary that's, program. Yeah, the program. So I, I think, uh, uh, depending upon how we think about it and how intentional we are about what we want the program to look like from a student population standpoint, this could be, on the one hand, the best thing since sliced bread. On the other hand, something that is entirely elite, entirely self-selecting, um, and that that's a that would be a shame for us too. That would be a horrible, horrible shame. And it sounds like Talisha, you're doing a great job of soliciting the input about how to essentially about how to talk with with students about that, which is exactly what you should be doing. But we, this is an issue that we have to keep top of mind um, throughout the, in, in perpetuity. Did I just say that? You did. You did. Uh, okay. Uh, I, I'm okay. All right. Okay. I'm okay. Just check. Uh, at, at any rate, I mean, it, it, it's, uh, I mean, it is, it's, it's unfortunately no joke. I mean, we've got to be really intentional about what we want that student population to look like or it's going to explode in our face. That's the beauty of this, is that we can recognize, for example, special needs students who can also benefit right. from this opportunity. That's why we chose the career-related pathway as opposed to the diploma program, because we feel like the diploma program does bring that elitism. But with the career-related pathway, we can connect with kids regardless of their background and help build them for success when we forward. Thanks for saying that. Is there a way to have like intro to business that they could take freshman year, sophomore year, and be like, okay, yes, I can see myself doing that, rather than get into it and be like, I'm not an accountant. <laughs> so, so when you're mapping out the courses within the application, it identifies like what are some courses that students should take a year before, two years before, and you can outline that. Um, I don't think that. I don't want it to become a process of gatekeeping, like to have a requirement on something versus, I mean, it's great for exposure, so I think it could be the conversation of, hey, if you're really thinking that you're wanting to pursue a pathway in business in our CP program, my recommendation is for you to take into the business, these courses, to see if you like it, so then by the time you're in your junior and senior year, um, you would know that you're in the right pathway. Do classes that they take freshman and sophomore year, if they happen to be in the pathway, do they count or they, they have to pick four new ones? Yeah, it has to be four within their junior and senior year okay. of the career related ones. So I'm sure you haven't gotten to this part yet, but this is going to have to be part of the eighth grade talk about planning out high school. Mm -hmm. And I will say that this is just one more reason that those conversations need to include families in person. You can't just send them home. Now that we're offering more and more options of things to do, and this is a brand new and more complicated that most parents aren't exposed to, you know, that's gonna be really helpful. Otherwise, students are gonna miss an opportunity and they're gonna be in their junior year and be like, oh, I really wanna do this, but it's too late, you know, or, you know, just that kind of thing. The, um, I'm not sure if you had the opportunity to look at the job description mm -hmm. that I drafted, but um, part of the things that the, our team was looking at was um, someone with a counselor background um, to really know and be able to navigate and support families within that decision-making framework and process. Um, the only courses that would be required for students to take that I've aligned at this point would, so like for example, if we had an IB English course, a student would need to take English 1 and English 2. So, to your point, I, I think, still think there would be a lot of flexibility for students to explore and learn about this their freshman and sophomore year. I think part of the, when we talk back to the DPI pathway, I think if you have an opportunity to go to DPI's pathway website and see the really impressive tools they've started to put together that really guide students to better understand. I think Jess, I I talked about this at our coalition meeting, right? Looking at salaries, looking at the job market. I mean, they've really put together a nice set of tools that will only continue to help this conversation. That's part of what the videos will be about, is introducing students to these things. Because families and students, it's just it's really nice that DPI is starting to kind of get on board with that. It'll be, again, one more tool to help with this process that we don't have to create, but it's localized, right? It's about the same county area, while keeping your students here from having a global perspective. Yeah, 
that personal touch with parents though is absolutely essential. Mm -hmm. And I'm grateful that you said it. We can absolutely make sure that that's a high priority for us. I mean, that, that leads to the broader discussion all around career and uh, readiness counseling, if you will, because I've heard feedback from the community that that is a place where we seem to miss yes. pretty regularly. But I've got a junior in high school, and uh, there's, yeah, I, I know there's some resources missing there. Um, so we're doing that all ourselves as I look at that. So do we see this as being a model? Trying to set this up as a model and then widening across the entire population? All options are on the table at this point. I, to say that we have a formal plan in place about how to beat that up might not be misrepresenting the truth if I told you otherwise, but it's on the table for us just to kind of think about how do we make that um, more accessible to families, more accessible to students. But I think that is also why the position would be split between a school yes. career coordinator and the IU program manager because in all reality, the, once a program is up and running, the creation of it is going to be a laborious task, but once you have something that's sustained, um, there will be a lot of flexibility to further enhance those needs that um, our, all of our students need. And that would be the STC that. coordinator. Assuming we can manage caseload. I have, parents, uh, I look at some of the college counselors that I talked to, and those conversations weren't worth having because they had, you know, 7,000 students. So, um, yeah. Uh, two, two quick practical questions. One was, did, did you apply for admittance to this then? Is that how that is, there, that is done? We, um, I mean, not us, I meant as individual students. students. Yeah. yeah, so um, my head of school training that I just attended this past month, there are schools that do have a specific application process. Um, I will say the, um, the logistics of that have not been considered at any point for me right now um, because I think our perspective would be inclusivity and opportunity for students. So I would say whenever that is developed, uh, that would be something that I think would very beneficial to have eyes on. And the other one was the, the reflective project. Mm -hmm. and is that is that managed by the coordinator? Okay. Yeah. I'm just wondering because over two years it's like where's the consistency? That would make sense. Yeah. And that's why a lot of schools said it's really great to have <coughs> your library media specialist in on that work. Sure. Um, because there are specific meetings that you have scheduled throughout the research and writing process um, within those two years. Some schools also mirror it within the PPS course. And the way the PPS course works within a schedule, you would have two semesters of it, but you have it split over the two years. So you might be learning the introduction of the components of your reflective project, have some things that students need to do independently, and then you're following up with that that second semester and the second year of the program. Just one, one broader comment. Um, I am curious about what schools across the country think about this. I would imagine it's pretty consistent with what we're seeing, but um, I want to make sure that we're thinking broadly about that for kids who have desire to go somewhere else. And also the same for career pathing. Like I, I totally respect our desire to do what's wanted in town and locally, but I don't want to be to have the blinders on too tight for that because this isn't the center of innovation. Uh, in the world uh, and so if there are careers out there that we ought to be in skills that we ought to be training kids for to expand beyond this area I think that we should really just make sure we're considering that I'm sure you are yeah. I just Looking want to at actual local, local, local. Local. yeah absolutely yeah sure. I will say something with the IB program too that is I think is just kind of speaks to the innovation and the advancement that they just do as an organization we were talking about the language portfolio at the conference I was at, and they're like, yeah, we're, we're in the process of, of having coding the language. And I'm like, wow, what a essential skill for students that are pursuing computer science or engineering background. I'm like, you'll have to learn this eventually. So if we can just honor that when you're in high school and have that meet the language need, that's fantastic. So they said it should be coming soon. <laughs> Dr. Salerno, do you have the timeline on um, where could you get that in here? Uh, so Lisa, I know this is just on the discussion item. There'll be a lot more discussion about this, but what are the hard deadlines as far as the application? If we're trying for the 25, 26 school year, what is our first deadline we have to 
Well, the first thing we have to do is submit our um, candidacy application. Currently, everything is pretty much buttoned up until you say I can submit it. So, and does um, that have to be in by April 1st, or does it have to be in by I Personally, I am someone that likes to get things done. <laughs> um, so I, the sooner the better, but obviously I'm not, this is a collaborative piece where we need to be making these decisions together. I'm chomping because I'm just a planner. Um, the biggest piece will be the authorization piece. So once we, we will have an authorization visit, and that would be the spring of 2025. Um, the sooner, the earlier in the spring, the better, because if we're not authorized or if there's things that we need to change, we need to have a buffer of time so we can accurately make sure that we can start a cohort in the 2025 fall semester. We believe that if we were to bring this to the board for consideration on December 4th, that would allow us to meet the window for application and allow the ball to start rolling uh, because we kind of preliminarily planned the different milestones that we need to touch. Um, Ultimately, we'd love to do that in the center of And think of our, like, our course proposal, like timeline as well, right? To make sure that if we have an IP course or two that we want to get by 25, 26, which has to go out next fall's book, which means by the end of the right. So I think there's just these like timeline pieces, and that's what I think of as whole building, right? Getting a course in there. We have a board policy around you know, what, what that process is and to need that too. One more thing I did mention, but it was something that's been sticking in my mind that Jim, you had mentioned somewhat a while ago when we were talking about um, volunteer hours and the number of hours and the kinds of hours that students are participating in. What I love about this program is it not only ups the game in terms of how many hours are required, but it also is more focused on things that are even more meaningful to the person who's giving up their time. So I, I like that piece too, and certainly that's just the minimum, by the way. So if we felt like we wanted to do something differently, we absolutely can. And that was 50 hours to 50. 50 hours. And it has to be aligned with just sure. some component of your career related side. Any other questions or comments? Thank you very much. You all Thanks. clearly learned. If you ever have questions about acronyms, you just <laughs> there, there are quite a bit. Thank you for allowing us the opportunity to present. Talk about this again. Seven fours. All righty. Seven A. First reading consideration of revisions to Board of Education Policy seventy three point two. Lack of privacy. Sandra? Sorry, you're also doing a technical recording duty. So yes, uh, policy 731.2 was originally called locker room privacy policy. Uh, however, in some of our original language and suggested language, um, including the word restroom, including the word restroom um, is also a must in the title of this policy. Uh, because any type of conditions um, expectations for behavior in the locker room with phones and other personal devices will carry over into the restroom as well. Um, in red, we can see the changes that were recommended by the WASD um, about um, the types of devices and what they do and how they should not be allowed when they decide in the restroom or in the locker room. Um, however, let's say an, an administrator or another uh, maintenance personnel needs to take a picture of something and do something in the locker room. Um, we want to make sure that that language was there in the locker room or the bathroom is closed. Um, and then we also, as a perfect time, a perfect example, with musicals or plays, we may have temporary changing areas that are not in the locker room or restroom. It could be in the stage area, um, makeup changing area, stage. Um, those would also be considered um, under this policy as well. We did not have that language prior. And that was it for the post revisions. Any questions or two? I have a question. Why are we only posting in the locker room? Because I guarantee that kids brought like I'm sure there are selfies in the bathroom. 
like so that would be a violation of the policy do they really understand that that's the policy so should we should it be posted in the temporary changing area should it be posted in the bathrooms yeah we can have a form of this um, if you travel in other schools and high schools you see on the side of the bathroom or outside the locker room so more succinct visual sometimes yes uh, we would create that and post it outside all those areas yeah so do we need to specify because right now we say we're just posting sure we can add the word restroom yeah. <coughs> all right so that's the first question Yes. 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 Yes.